yeah. What's good, world? Illogic, aka C Reality. Yeah, let's get into this newness.
at least temporary housing for people, or um, I mean immediate immediate housing for people, or uh, or a more long term sort of housing. Uh, but but I mean really like if you want to talk about strategies, like first you have to figure out what your goals are. You know what I mean? So I mean if there is goal, you know, use like using information from people who have done what you've done and uh, a guy in California what he's done to maybe take some, you know, foreclosed empty properties and use them for like things like this, like having, you know, more locations like the squirrel, like community, you know, maybe not because I personally need a home, but because this house could be used for something productive, like in, in some way. Do you think there would be a way to educate people in mass and you know make this an option for people who want to organize within communities to know how to do it the right way? Because yeah, it, it makes a difference. You know, how long has this place been empty? Is this the ideal situation, or is this house not ideal because you know the the owner's still alive? That's obviously not an ideal situation. Right. Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's like <laughs> I like. I have my own sort of like idealistic yeah, fantasies about like thinking. how I would like to see things play out in, in various different timelines. But um, I mean, none of those are like the answer, and they're really dependent on like quite a few factors. Um, but I think. I mean, if you want to talk about some sort of like large scale, like mass. Um, <laughs> Squatters movement in the U.S. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, like anywhere in the U.S. versus um, a place with a more uh, historically embedded squatter culture, like certain places in Europe. Um, I mean, I think it, you do have to start from a, a place of education to get to sort of reshape the culture to be understanding of what it is that you're trying to do. Because the thing is, like, even if you have your whole big group of friends and you're going to go into some place and you feel really, like, you know, morally good about what you're doing, you're like, we're doing the right thing, we're saving this building, or whatever, but then you've got, like, you know, a couple people in the neighborhood who are like, I don't get what you're doing, this feels like an assault in some way. Um, and, and also, like, a challenging of, of, like, the capitalist system, which it is, um, but if they don't understand why, then it's just going to seem like you're a bunch of criminals, you know what I mean? So it's like, so there, there are two things that kind of go hand in hand with creating a spotter's movement, and one of them is like reshaping the culture, and then, um, or like the cultural climate, and then the other one is like reshaping the legal climate, right? And they go hand in hand, like, like certain um, cultural trends have affected the like legal climates and have reshaped laws over the history. I mean, like the book goes back as far as colonialism and like westward expansion and like how laws were shaped by spotter movements and by property resistors. Um, so I mean that totally happens, and it goes the other way too, where like the existing laws shape, like colonize people's minds and shape the way that they think about. How things should be. So it's like a very complex, like there, like unfortunately, there's not like a like a, a clearly defined step by step. Like here's what you do next in the process of creating your squatter revolution or whatever. Yeah, Colin. So I, I wonder, you, you sort of started to allude to this a little bit, like folks going into a neighborhood that like people aren't particularly accepting them when they get there. Um, I mean, in your experience in your writing and in your research, did you run into like? Sort of politicized squatting gone bad, gone, you know, uh, in a direction that people didn't expect it to go or didn't want it to go, or you know, nobody was pleased with it at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's one story about. Um, uh, so, is, is everybody familiar with the organization Homes Not Jails? Um, they were they were a group kind of like take back the land, at least like in the same vein as take back the land, um, but started in San Francisco in like 1992. Um, and then grew throughout the 90s and expanded and, um, you know, moved to some other cities as well, including like Boston and Washington, D.C. Um, but I think it was in 2000, maybe, um, there was this big action that some Homes Not Jails activists did in uh, the Columbia Heights neighborhood in D.C. And uh, 
they they took over a house and they did the thing that Steve DiCaprio described as like, you know, squatter, 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 we love it, and you know, dropped the banners and said, you know, hey, we're doing this thing, and um, and it was very poorly received by neighbors, and um, and I think people were really like. This action was a failure in multiple ways because not only were neighbors <coughs> upset, but then police showed up, and the police were. Um, I actually I, I want to read this quote about this because um, the one the one neighbor that got quoted said it better than I could. Um, Um, it, it basically just showed the, uh, it highlighted the racism of the cops, even. Um, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, police, on the other hand, were mostly bewildered by the action and unsure if they should treat the white activists as criminals. I'm kind of inclined to make this a civil, not a criminal issue, the responding officer said. They're making improvements, they're trying to help the homeless, clearing out trash, there's no complaint, complainant. They're also living in a house that's not theirs. They've got three pluses and one minus against them. So this is the cop talking, and like, when have you ever heard a cop say anything like this? And it's because they're in a black neighborhood. Um, meanwhile, neighbors protested that if a group of black men had done the same action, the legal repercussions and police response would have been drastically more severe. Uh, the race issue was one that the squatters had overlooked in choosing their first house. Uh, some of the neighbors even thought that Homes Not Jails was a front group for white people from Virginia and Maryland trying to move back to the city and take control of neighborhoods of color. Um, yeah, so I think that, like, you know, paying attention to your surroundings is like, a really crucial part of choosing a location. Yeah? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm pretty intrigued because some of the things that you said just turned a light bulb on here. I mean, we've been missing it. When, when, you, when you get a property from the city, say, for example, a pipe burst outside the house. And it's the city's responsibility if it's the property is on their property, as they claim is, you know, city property. They won't go beyond fixing from the sidewalk, right? So that, that that's a loop to tell us that their responsibility stops there. Their legal responsibility stops there. All right? So what I'm thinking is... If we were to push this thing to a revolutionary point, you know, because especially with the cops, you know, dropping off in civil matters, once it comes to a certain point on the property, they have no responsibility whatsoever to go past that point. So what I'm thinking is, is I got a piece that someone emailed me the other day. I know I sent it, uh, sent a uh, copy of to Ryan, but. I want to explore it a little bit more because maybe we can take the the financial piece out of this this whole mortgage thing. I'm just kind of thinking 100 miles an hour, so I kind of look <laughs> sideways on myself because what you were saying just turned a light on for me. I, I'm so, so glad to hear that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, who had their hand up? Go ahead. Go ahead. I thought I didn't. Go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, I was wondering if you had done any research on people's perceptions, I guess. Um, it seems like today, and probably starting in 2008 with the, with the press coverage, it, squatters have gotten the short end of the stick that people are like, I would rather see a house vacant or I'd rather have an absentee owner than have someone living there. And that seems like a new idea. It seems like in 1800 that someone would be like, oh good, someone took up that property and they're living there now. And in between there was a shift. Was it, was it like in the, in the mid-2000s or was it before then, do you know? 
do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, I think I know what you're asking. I'm not sure if I can speak to like, uh, like the you know dominant perception of that uh, on, a, on a precise timeline. Um, but I mean, I can say that like, I mean, I read a lot of articles about squatters and foreclosed homes, and I you know watch a lot of like local newscasts about it and like and the problem is that um the problem with that media portrayal is well two things i mean one it's it sounds like a really sensational topic so it's really easy to sensationalize it and to take you know these faceless squatters and say oh they could be anybody and they're you know and get people worked up about that um especially people who uh, our homeowners or property owners and then they get sort of worked into this tizzy and they get scared um, and the other side of that is that usually for security reasons none of those journalists can even interview the other side the squatters don't get interviewed for the most part um, so there's no face attached to it so as long as you have like a faceless villain then it's really easy to be scared of them um, so I don't know, I think that, that that might kind of play into it a little bit as far as like media portrayal of squatters and like general attitudes toward them. Does that, does that kind of like drive it? Yeah, I think so. I, I was also kind of thinking of uh, people owning second properties where someone has a vacation home that's essentially vacant for some huge chunk of the year. That seems like such a silly waste, but then then I guess I don't have the money to have a vacation at home, so maybe I'd think differently. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like a dumb thing, you know? Anyway. Can I answer your question, though? Yeah. But I, mean, but I guess, well, I guess if I were to rephrase it, was there a progression? Did you see that, that maybe something in the newspaper in 1965 was said, oh, there's squatters here, and had a sympathetic eye, or was it always kind of nameless villains yeah. was the theme? Um, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like like some people who were around during that time might have a. Sorry, okay, so no, <laughs> um, not usually sympathetic. But um, I'll get to you in one second. People are, are, are doing things against the law, and that's against the law. I mean, even the, I think in the '60s, those were people who were renters in apartment buildings, and, and they just stayed. And and uh, you know, and the presence of police makes makes. Uh, people think uh, these are bad people. Right. Mm -hmm. These are wrong. Right. Well, they don't really have Well, okay. So, so that's from one perspective, though, right? I mean, that's when you're on the one side, looking, uh, looking out at it, and you're saying, well, you know, I wouldn't want someone to squat my home. I'm feeling threatened by this. But on the flip side, I mean. <clears throat> I think half of Americans, when they were asked if, you know, if they were in the situation where their house was going into foreclosure or they were about to become homeless, half of them said that they would become squatters before they even entered the shelter system because they would prefer to do that. So I think like when you put yourself in those shoes, you say, all of a sudden you can identify with it and you say, well, I'd much rather do that. But when you're looking at it from a property owner's perspective, then it starts to sound really scary. Um, I think was it it was you and then is it Catherine? Okay, Catherine and then you. Um, you had some examples of like circumstances that make for kind of like bad squatting. What is like a kind of kismet of? circumstances like your buddy was kind of you know like casing out different properties what what do you feel are are some really good circumstances for uh, for a prolonged successful squat Ooh, um, definitely dead over mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean I think that that's really key because then you don't have somebody like breathing down your neck um, and I think, oh, I mean, if you're like investigating places, like if you, you know, if you check with the county assessor and you, um, or the, uh, the tax collector and, and there are many years of, of taxes that have not been paid, I mean, that's a good green flag to say, 
uh, you know, this is probably genuinely abandoned. And I mean, that's really what you want to be looking for, is you want to look for places that are genuinely abandoned. Because um, you know, I don't think any of us are interested in, um, in like, you know, breaking into a house and, and stealing it from, out from other people who are actually using it, because that's not really the point. Um, so, so yeah, anything you can do to verify that. And um, I know, so one, one of the appendices is, uh, was actually written by Steve DiCaprio, and he's, uh, he's, got his, he's got a list in here, actually, of green flags, yellow flags, and red flags. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, one green flag is a, a very old or unresolved probate case. Yellow flags include a bankruptcy proceeding or a foreclosure proceeding, which means like proceed with caution. Um, and then, a, and then some red flags would include uh, recent cases indicating that the owner is still actively engaged in litigation, um, or a recently commenced probate case indicating that the owner's estate is about to be dispersed, or a recent unlawful detainer case, which is i.e. an eviction. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a lot of like legally used, like heavy like legal stuff. But um, I, mean, I would say just you know research as much as you can, and then also um, were you also asking about like like the neighbor like, type of neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, because I mean you you talked about having that successful squat in a um, you know traditionally industrial neighborhood, and then you know not having a lot of uh, residents. It wasn't a residential neighborhood, so then then you don't have residents to complain. So um, yeah, I mean that that definitely plays a part too, there, right? Yeah, yeah, and I mean I mean it's just it's a lot to think about, um, and I'm not sure that there's like one golden scenario. Mm -hmm. I think it's just sort of like you know scout out the place you're scouting out and see if it seems feasible. I think that. Tie off. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I would think to, if you were going to go into a, a residential neighborhood, pretend like you're an owner. What would it look like if someone bought that house and was going to move in there? They would go introduce themselves to the neighbors. They start mowing the lawn. You know, just make it look like you own it. Mm -hmm. And people don't really pay any attention to their neighbors these days. Right. Particularly, I mean, depending on the neighborhood, but you know, you can probably slide by pretty easily. Yeah. Okay. So uh, was it Catherine was there? Yeah. When I, when I joined Take Back the Land, the first action that I joined was uh, the defense against the eviction of the family we saw in the video upstairs earlier, the first family that got placed into that home. And they, in fact, befriended the neighbors. And one of the most touching things to me about that demonstration was that the neighbors were all out uh, lining up in the defense and said uh, to, the, to the camera uh, for the uh, media how touched they were by these people and repeatedly I heard, these are the best neighbors we've ever had. So there is something about taking property and being an active good neighbor engaged that, that worked. They were removed from the house, but not until they'd spent the, that seven months getting back on their feet. But, but that was really touching to me that they did engage in it, that it worked for them. And they had seven good months instead of seven months of hiding or, or feeling uh, that the neighbors were suspicious. Yeah. Um, sorry, someone else had their hands up next? Was it you? I'm all right now. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you and then you. Um, when I wanted to find an empty house or an apartment building, no, not, not less. And you decide to go and live in it, and you buy the, buy the light and you pay for the gas and electric and all that stuff. Now, is there a gas well? Just move it in there? Uh, and just fix up everything and try to fix up everything yourself? I mean, yeah, if you move into a property that you are not under any sort of contract to legally move into, then, I mean, sure, you're breaking the law. But the thing to remember is that it's a civil matter. I mean, it's not a criminal matter. Breaking and entering is a criminal matter. Actually being in the house is a civil matter. What if it's abandoned? Even, even if it's abandoned. But the, I mean, the, thing, the thing to remember, though, is like, 
like Steve McCaffrey was saying, where it doesn't matter if it's civil or criminal, police will still do whatever they want to do because a lot of times they don't even know the law. The assumptions that go into the word squatter, right? I think of middle class white people from the suburbs who want to romanticize taking over a building and living in it, and these are my assumptions, right? What I see Take Back the Land doing is working with people who are in their homes already, who are being um, illegally evicted, or working with homeless people and finding homes for them in abandoned houses, right. which is also squatting, but I have a totally different conception of the assumptions that go in with that mm -hmm. versus these assumptions I have for like this romantic thing about going in and squatting places, you know? And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about those distinctions and maybe help me elucidate a little bit more like what those assumptions are that maybe I'm negatively putting in that I shouldn't be, but I'm just sort of some of the stuff that I've experienced and, and talked with people about over the years. I don't know if that's a fair Yeah, idea. I mean, I don't know how to, like, I guess more clearly delineate between these different types of squatters. I mean, there are, there are so many different types of squatters, and I think that there are, you know, certain people have certain connotations about the word squatter, mm -hmm. which to different people will mean different things. I mean, to you, you know, it means, um, white suburbanites who are looking for an adventure, and to other people it means, you know, something widely different. Um, I don't, I guess the thing that's, that's dangerous about that word as kind of this like catch-all term for all these things that we're doing is that it doesn't, um, it doesn't clearly demarcate between, you know, this type and this type and this type and this type. And there really are, I mean, there, there are just so many different I mean, there are different types of people who squat. They squat for different reasons. They are squatting different types of places, and and they're in different legal situations. So, um, I mean, I guess that's one reason why it was like really hard to write the book, <laughs> um, because of all those different factors. But um, but yeah, I'm not sure that I have like a really solid answer. I don't even know what I'm asking. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying like that there's these terms and. Like, yeah. is there a better term, or are there, is there more broad language to use, I guess, to help delineate, but I don't know. Well, I know that, like, um, in some European countries, they have, like, different words for different types of squatters. Um, and maybe we can work on, like, creating some different terminology. Like a a non-owner occupant. Yeah. <laughs> non-owner occupied. <laughs> I think squatting is that capitalistic threat to put a, you know, a, 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 a negative face on it. You know, and I think when somebody said occupy, I think reoccupying would be a better term to more, more assess uh, glamorizing the true issue behind the fraud and all the stuff that goes along with it. So in this sense, the other part of the grid is that the, 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 the president made this big bell. So basically taking it back as far as reoccupying that, I think it would be a better face than, you know, them painting on one side and saying squatting. Well, we're, we, we're, we're occupying that property because XYZ and just do it. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Right, I mean, the, word, the term squatting only exists as a reaction to right. certain assumptions about what private property is supposed to mean. So, I mean, if we took it out of that context and just talked about it like what it really is in a world in which we would, of what we would want property to be, then maybe that's a, a useful way to go. There you go. There you go. Maybe one or two more questions. Yeah, sure. It's like, like people are starting to have to leave. So. Um, anybody else burning with something that they want to 
either ask or comment. Going once, going but Okay. Um, well, in that case, thank you all so much for coming and for... <laughs> And um, I want to note that, um, so this tour that I'm on, I'm actually spending the next month going all around the Northeast to talk about these things, um, is unfunded. So if you have a, you know, a dollar or two that you want to drop my way, that's great. Or even better, um, buy the book. Buy the book. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, I, and I also have um, DVDs and stuff too. So um, thanks again. Woo! Woo! Babylon system defiance against these kings of money and finance. No reliance, rebel alliance. I ain't down with the bullshit, so I can't spit nonsense. No ride the fence, I'm incensed. The problems immense, feel the suspense. No false pretense, I'm here. Head forward, I condense the offense. Let the battle commence. Onward, upward, in the present tense. Don't be dense, revolution just makes sense. Intense, when 1% of the 1% got us all bent out of shape. What's it gonna take? Self the fence.